Hey Planty people, it's Taylor back with another video. This one is going to be dedicated to all my Hoya lovers. I myself am a Hoya lover. The Hoya genus is one of my favorites for sure. I have like I think 15 or so different varieties and I've just truly enjoyed having these plants in my home for the past few years. I've found them to be really easy. They just seem no fuss, they grow really well, and they're just great. So this video is just celebrating Hoyas. I'm going to be showing off dif different ones in my collection and giving you some different care tips, tricks, advice, kind of how I take care of mine, what seems to work well for me. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So first off, I will show my OG, my first ever Hoya that I bought. This is a Hoya um, Carnosa. It's just the standard Carnosa, this beautiful, just plain kind of green look. And I bought this, oh man, probably about three years ago. And it was just tiny. It probably had like five, six leaves on it. And now it's grown from there and it has bloomed for me multiple times. It actually just recently was blooming and I just didn't start making this video in time to catch those blooms. But um, these kind of funky little spots are the peduncles is what they're called, where the blooms come out. And if you leave them, they do tend to rebloom. So I've gotten quite a few blooms out of this guy. And um, yeah, it's beautiful. This is actually one of my Hoyas that lives in a lower light spot. Typically Hoyas like higher light, but I've had good luck with this one living in my bedroom window, which is actually more of like a northeast. Not the brightest, but this guy has really been um, enjoying it. It's been doing well. It actually put out like the biggest leaf it's um, put out so far living in that window. So yeah, my OG Hoya. Carnosa. So this is my beautiful Hoya Linearis. I am really proud of this one. I grew it from literally like if you took just the bottom part off like that. Just had separate cuttings and they have now turned into this. I've propagated it multiple times and made it more full and I've probably had it for I'm guessing like two years. Yes, this one's amazing. It's got these beautiful fuzzy leaves. It's just great. I love it. And it also has bloomed for me as well. One so far. Hoya Linearis. Okay, so I've grabbed a couple others of some of my um, bigger Hoya that I've had for quite a while. But first I'm going to talk a little bit about their lighting and watering requirements, or at least what I do for them that seems to work well. So Hoyas typically do like more light. I have most of mine in a southeast window and they're pretty like right up against that window or as close as I can get them and they really love that light. I have had experience with some of them in lower, I wouldn't say low, but like less light than that and they do tend to do okay, they just don't grow as fast, but if you can I'd give those guys quite a bit of light. And then I have a couple, and I'll talk about them when I show them, that live in like a plant cabinet that I built. Um, basically, it's just like an old armoire, and I put, what are they called? Grow lights, <laughs> grow lights in there. And they're pretty bright, and they, they do well in it. I haven't had any issues like burning them or anything. They do sit like a few inches from the light for sure, but they love light. So, um, I'll show you my Hoya obovata, this beautiful plant on this cute circular trellis, which I just thought was an adorable combo. These are, leaves are just, I just love them, these chunky circular leaves. And then this one is blooming, which hopefully you can see that. The blooms are absolutely adorable. One of my favorite blooms I think I've, I've had so far, but I love this guy. This one, and then the one I'm gonna show you in a second. I guess I can just pull it into frame. My pubicalyx. These were both bought as pretty small, like bare-rooted cuttings, kind of back when I first was starting my Hoya collection journey. 
and they have grown quite a bit since then, obviously. They're pretty large and I've propagated them and they're blooming now and they're just doing great and I'm really excited about it. I love these guys. This one is my pubicalyx. Hoya pubicalyx. You can see it's got a little bit of this kind of peachy sun stressing on some of the leaves, which is another fun thing that Hoyas do when you give them quite a lot of light is they can sun stress. And the sun stressing does look different on all the different varieties. And Hoyas get these crazy tendrils, I guess you could call them. These, yeah, insane. They'll wrap around each other, which is really cute. And then you can just kind of like stick them around a trellis. They're gonna try to grab onto things. I've had them grab onto my blinds, just anything they can. And um, don't cut these off unless you want to like shape your plant more. But a lot of times they'll stick these runners, whatever you wanna call them out, and then they'll grow leaves on them. This one's a little crazy. I've been trying to train it around this trellis, but it's gonna need something bigger soon because it's going crazy. But look at these amazing blooms on this pubicalyx. These are probably my favorite blooms that I've had in my collection. They're just big, beautiful, this full bundle of them. Love them. So that's pubicalyx. As I grab this other one, I'll talk a little bit about watering requirements. So Hoyas don't need a ton of water. They're definitely underwater friendly. Um, I probably water all of mine, I'd say between every two and three weeks. Some of them fall outside of that, depending on what kind of pot they're in, what size pot they're in. It, obviously, if they're in like a really tiny pot, this one's in a pretty small pot, terracotta, closer to two weeks, or maybe even a little more frequently than that, but you can really let them dry out. And then the ones that are in bigger pots, like the ones I just showed off, probably closer to every three weeks that I water them. And then I have some that I'll talk about uh, later that are in even bigger pots or like plastic pots. I water close to maybe once a month. So they really don't need a ton as far as watering. And another good way that some people tell is just by feeling the leaves. So I've noticed with a lot of these plants that have like thicker leaves like this, they don't tend to need as much water. Now, each one's gonna be different. Do your research, obviously. I don't have a ton of the thinner leafed Hoyas. I'd assume those would need more water, but you can kind of feel the leaves. So this one, I did just water like yesterday. So it definitely has plumped up already, but there is a slight bit of bend to the leaf. Maybe you can see that. Um, this is obviously a newer leaf, so it doesn't really, that doesn't really apply to the new leaves but you can give them a feel, and if they feel really plump, then they probably don't need water. Once they're getting to the point where they do need water, which if I have a good example around, I'll show you when I pull it out, they do have a little more give to the leaves, and that's when they need water. Check the soil trick, stick your finger in the soil, see if it's dry, they can get pretty dang dry before you water them. Or I like to go kind of by like the weight of the pot, so I know what it feels like when it's heavy and watered, and then I'll, I'll pick it up and know like, okay, it's pretty light, it probably needs water. But yeah, as I've s sat here and talked about watering, I didn't mention the what this one is. This one is my Hoya Macrophylla albomarginata, which I think someone told me recently that it might have changed to Hoya latifolia or something like that, but it's one of those. It's very cute. It's also on a little trellis. But like I said, this one's a good example of how it kind of shot out this runner. I wrapped it around and then it decided to put out some leaves on the end. And it, it'll probably put leaves out further down, but yeah, it's a little cutie. Okay, I'm back. I put some away and I got some others out. So now the ones that I'm gonna show you next all live in that kind of grow cabinet I was talking about. If you watch my houseplant collection tour, you got a view of it. It's just, it's literally just an armoire and it's got grow lights in it and they all live, you know, a couple inches below those grow lights, but pretty dang close to them. And I'll link the grow lights, they're amazing. I have them on timers 
and all my higher light plants that are in there seem to really love them. Now all these Hoyas, they definitely bloom way more than my other ones. And I don't know if it's just because of the variety, because I have heard that about some of the varieties, that they just bloom easily, they bloom a lot. But it also might have something to do with that they do get a lot of light and they really love it in there. So first I'll grab my Hoya Bretoniae. Bretoniae, Bretoniae. This one is got a fun, like fuzzy, kind of velvety texture to the leaves. It's sun-stressed really nicely. It's got the, these like purple edges to the leaves and this like purpley sun-stressing. This is also one of mine that blooms a ton. It's got peduncles for days on here. I could probably count, I don't even know, 10 plus peduncles on here, but right now there's no blooms that are open, which is kind of a bummer, but yeah. Hoya species affinity bretonii, I believe is what it is. And then next to that, I've got my Hoya, I think this is Hoya croniana silver. I'm pretty sure, or maybe lacunosa. Those seem very similar to me, but I think it's croniana. Another one that blooms a lot for me. And it has these adorable fuzzy blooms. They're so cute. They're like fuzzy white. Some of these are falling off. But yeah, it's got probably like three right now that are open and then a bunch that are coming in. While I'm holding this one and just thinking about more things that are amazing about Hoyas, they're pet friendly, pet safe. So if your dog, your cat takes a nibble of them, they'll be okay. They're not toxic, which is really awesome. I do have a dog. Luckily, she does not care about my plants. She's never tried to nibble one or anything like that. But if you're a pet lover, you have some fur babies and you want to have plants and you're worried about your pets taking a nibble of those, Hoyas are great to have because they are non-toxic, which is awesome. So another great thing about Hoya. This is my variegated Wayetii. I think sometimes it's called a Kentiana, but I'm not sure if that's a totally different variety. But it basically looks like a Wayetii. It's just variegated. And holy cow, this one has been, it hasn't bloomed before until the last couple weeks, and it is my most prolific bloomer yet. It has one, two, three, four, I think five open um, blooms right now, which hopefully you can see them. Super cute, and it's probably got like 10 total peduncles on there. But this one is gorgeous and I love it. And this one, a couple of my Hoyas are just kind of sitting in these cover pots. It's just sitting inside there. Almost all of them are in terracotta, but I do have a few that are in plastic. So obviously the ones that are in plastic are gonna hold on to moisture a little longer and not need watered as often. But um, Hoyas do really well in terracotta. And then, you know, the plastic, they do fine too, but just don't water them quite as often. Yeah, so cute. Love, I love them all, as you can tell. Okay, so we've kind of covered some of the basics on like watering and lighting. So another thing I was thinking about is like pests, common pests with Hoya and how I combat that. So some common pests, pests that I've dealt with, mealybugs mealybugs like Hoya and that goes for the regular fluffy gross mealybugs that you see on the surface of the leaves but also root mealies. I have had root mealies I think on at least my Hoya carnosa, regular Hoya carnosa. I use like a systemic and like you know I tried to get rid of as much of the soil as I could, fresh soil, systemic and that has seemed to have dealt with the problem at least the plant seems happy, it's growing, it's blooming, but I haven't pulled it out of the pot in a while to see if there's any more root mealies on it. And then mealy bugs, just the regular kind that you see on the surface of the leaves. I have noticed them on like 
my Hoya Bretonii, I've had like one and I don't know where it came from. I just killed it with a little bit of alcohol and good to go. You can wipe them off with alcohol. You can spray your plant down with, there's lots of different treatments out there. I'll link some common products that I use as well, just for general pest prevention and management. Another thing I like to do is I bring my Hoyas to the sink and I like to just blast them, just spray them off with water all over the leaves, all the surfaces, just try to spray them down to possibly blast anything off that's on them. And then another common one that you're probably hearing about if you're a Hoya lover is flat mites. I know that that's another common pest that we're just kind of hearing more about in the Hoya community. I've never gone as far as to get like an actual microscope and see if I have them. I'm sure I do. I'm just living in denial. <laughs> but I mean, my Hoyas are really happy. They're all growing. None of them have like weird markings really or anything that would make me suspect something like that. But that is a common pest that attacks Hoya. And those are really the, the only thing that I've really dealt with is mealybugs. I think spider mites are another common one, but I've, I think I've maybe had them on my linearis. I wasn't even sure if they were spider mites or soil mites. And I sprayed it off really well with like Captain Jack's and you know, for a little while and I haven't noticed them since. But there are some, some pests that definitely target Hoyas or are common with Hoyas. Those are a few that I've dealt with but they're pretty hardy plants overall. So I was kind of already showing it, but this is my Hoya Carii um, Splash, I guess it would be considered. Yeah, pretty cool one. Not a whole lot to say about it. I haven't had it that long yet, but it's a pretty good one. And then I've got my, my Hoya Obovata Variegata, cutie. Look at that. It even had a peduncle or, or two, but I don't see them now. I might have cut them off when I um, tried to cut it because there was one vine, like this vine's more vari variegated. This vine, for some reason, has these leaves that are not as variegated. So I cut it here, and then that's where like one leaf was variegated, one wasn't. And these new ones, not really very variegated. So I'm probably gonna chop it again. But another fun thing about Hoya, um, as far as propagation goes, which I'll kind of talk about because this is one that I've recently propagated and then I'll show you an, another one, little propagations that I've um, rooted. So they're pretty easy to propagate and what's great is they will put out roots pretty much anywhere on the stem. There's really no specific place you have to cut. I would just cut like above a leaf. For this particular plant that I'm trying to increase the variegation, I probably try to cut to the last like pretty variegated spot and then see if if it puts out a more variegated vine but you can cut pretty much anywhere and you can get roots along the stem and you can root Hoya in like sphagnum moss or water my favorite way probably just to propagate in general is water they do great stick them in water to take a while to get pretty good roots on them but then you can just stick them in soil. I think some people probably just stick them directly in soil to root them. But this is a propagation that I recently took from my Croniana Silver. So there's a couple cuttings in there. Um, I rooted these in water and just waited till the roots were, you know, a decent size and then stuck them in soil. But yeah, I've had good luck propagating Hoya. For the most part, pretty easy. So that's another fun thing about them. And then here's another beautiful Hoya, Hoya Compacta uh, Variegata. This is the one that has the white variegation on the outside of the leaves. This is another one that whenever I look at it, I get worried about getting mealybugs or something in these little crevices because it probably would be really hard to treat. But that's why I like with all my plants and, you know, Hoya included, I bring them to the sink and I just pr try to blast them when I water them. And, you know, I try to use pest prevention, insecticidal soaps, neem oil mixtures, like whenever I think about it, hopefully at least once a season. But yeah, that just kind of helps. So 
beautiful. This one's gorgeous. Yeah. On to a bigger one of my Hoyas. Hoya Finlay Sonai. Let's see if I can pull it out here. This is one of my big ones that's in a plastic pot. Probably water this one like every three weeks to a month, which goes for these these last few real big ones that I'll show. But this one, just such cool leaves. Like look at the veining on those leaves. So cool. It's really fun. And this one I think had one tiny peduncle on it. So hopefully we'll get some blooms soon. There's a little peduncle here. I think there might've been another one. It's like, they start just like teeny tiny. You probably can't even see that. But yeah, this one's beautiful. Love it. So this is my Hoya Crimson Queen. Really beautiful. The last two are my biggest, um, my Crimson Queen and my Princess. And I love them. They're amazing. The Queen can put out fully white leaves, which you can kind of see here. And one thing I love is that on Hoya in particular, the white leaves last a really long time. They don't seem to brown as fast as they would on like other types of plants. And yeah, it's just gorgeous. I love her. She's beautiful and big and flowy. So I'll show you the princess next. Okay, last but not least, my Hoya Crimson Princess. She's huge. My biggest Hoya. Um, for sure like look at the pot size on this one this one i water like once a month or less it takes a while for this to dry out um, so this one's a really gorgeous one pretty easy to find as well and i don't have a whole lot else to say about her so those are my hoyas i hope you enjoyed that i hope you're a hoya lover like me and if not maybe this convinced you to become one because Hoyas are amazing. And like I said, they're easy, they're no fuss. They get a bad rap, I feel like, for being slow growers, but I have not noticed that in my experience. They maybe take a little bit to get established, but once they're established, they pop off and they grow pretty fast. They're super fun plants to have. I highly recommend you try one if you have not yet. There's, as you can see, a large variety of the different kinds that you can get from the simple version of like the Hoya Carnosa that I showed at the beginning, just the regular Carnosa, to the Carnosa Compacta with its twisty leaves. And it's there's just so many different types with different variegation, different sun stressing, and then the whole other element of the blooms, which are really exciting. So those are Hoyas. This video is dedicated to my love for Hoyas, and I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.